This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash bruiseandblasters. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Here we go. You're listening to Brews and Blasters, RetroZap.com's free-ranging discussion about all things Star Wars. How we doing? The same as always. That bad, huh? With your hosts, Chris and Joe, two guys from Boston who are talking about this stuff anyway. Key religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Let us go inside where we can discuss business over a drink. Conversation anyway. This place can be a little rough. This is madness. Would you join me for a little refreshment? Everyone's invited, of course. I think you overestimate their chances. No, not really, no. I'm listening. Never find the more wretched high will scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bruise and Blasters, RetroZap.com's free-ranging discussion about all things Star Wars. The Star Wars party begins now. All right, guys, I'm joined today, fresh back from San Diego Comic-Con, RetroZept World Traveler Convention Goer Extraordinaire. I, I don't I didn't know what to say. It's just a goer. <laughs> goer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, app, don't, don't shut you off. Do not speak until I give you the intro. Ah, okay. Podcast 101. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we... I'm gonna start this over. The Star Wars party begins now. All right, guys, fresh off <laughs> San Diego Comic Con. Mike God Dead, how you doing, buddy? What is up, Chris? Jesus Christ, Joe. God. Woof, brain fart. Oh my, Jesus Lord. I'm keeping all this in. I'm not editing anything, any of this out. <laughs> what is up, Joe? What is up, everybody? Hold on, no, no, no. Don't, that is not an intro. <laughs> the Star Wars party begins now. All right, guys, fresh off San Diego Comic Con convention. Extraordinaire, extraordinary, extraordinary, unusual world traveler, con convention goer. Friend to everyone, master of nothing. <laughs> the Renaissance man, the the tattooed Star Wars fan that we all know and love. He has Tarkin on his arm. A good friend of mine, even though he's from the South Shore. Mike Audet, how you doing, buddy? What is up, Joe? What is going on, everybody? Wow. We really- we- we took the people behind the carton just then, and, uh, we showed them how the sausage is made. That- that was- that was- that was something. That was- that was definitely something. <laughs> that was a big- that was- 
Wow, this is not how I planned things to go. I, I just... <laughs> I don't it's, know. I don't know what we're doing right now. We've we've both had a few, uh, quite a few uh, strange days yeah, recently. Been, yeah. Hey, speaking of strange, have you seen Stranger Things on Netflix? I got, I keep hearing about it. I just haven't had the chance to sit down and watch it. Just with all the uh, travel that I've had recently, so yeah. I think this weekend I'm going to get down to it. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Star Wars, Stranger Things is so amazing. Um, I. You know, I had some time off last week, and uh, I stayed up to like 4 a.m. just binge watched the entire season. It, it's unreal. It took me back to my childhood. Um, anyone who loves the OT or lived through it, uh, you got you gotta love it. it you, you're, you're just gonna love the feel of the entire series. It's set in the early 80s. It, it feel it's shot like it was in the early 80s. Uh, it's this mis mishmash of, I mean. It, it's what Super 8 should have been. I mean, Super 8 did a lot of great things, but, I mean, this is next level good. Next level good. You'll know from the music, you'll know from the opening title, you'll know from the story, which is amazing. Uh, I mean, there are some Star Wars, there are plenty of Star Wars references in there, actually. Plenty. So, uh, you know, check it out for that. Check it out for just how awesome it is. Uh, it seems to be gaining a lot of traction this week. Uh, more, more and more people are talking about it. So I, 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 I caught it, I, I guess I caught it early. I, 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 heard, I saw the, the trailer about two months ago and I knew. I just saw kids on BMX bikes in the 80s and I'm like, this is my jam. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is it. Yeah. So It's what, like 10 episodes? They're like I think it's sort eight. of like eight. Yeah. You know, sort of like HBO length episodes, like 58 minutes, like yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, yeah. And, and you'll be, you'll be hooked. I stayed up till 4 a.m. It was fantastic. Nice. I, I never, I never skip that lead. I'm exhausted now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Whatever <laughs> Whatever time it is, when you're listening to this, I'm exhausted. Trust me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I had some cold brew coffee that day. Have you had the cold brew coffee, Mike? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. I, I like it's, the cold brew. It's, it's like injecting it straight into your veins. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but yeah, I like the cold brew coffee. <laughs> Nothing is going as I planned it to go. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Star Wars, um, Stranger Things, it's really good. Also speaking of Star Wars, tell me all about San Diego Comic-Con, Mike. I want to hear, you know, how, how it was, you know? This is your first time, right? Yeah, first San Diego Comic-Con. Yep. Um, unbelievable. So... For everyone uh, listening who has never been to San Diego, what's it like compared to, let's say, a local convention? What's it like compared to, like, Star Wars Celebration? Uh, so for, like, a local convention, it is almost like that on, like, 10,000 steroids. Wow. It's, there's... That's a, that's like, a lot. It, that is a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> it's just... The atmosphere and the presence of the convention center is just, it's so much more crowded. Yeah. And the fact that almost every single, I wouldn't say vendor, but most of the exhibitors. Vendor. You're not going to see, you're not going to see these exhibitors at a local convention. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You, you pull in the big names. You pull in the exactly. movie stars. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's going all out there. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. getting Marvel, DC, Warner Brothers, is it ABC, the, Fox. Is it, is it the biggest convention there is? is? Is it is it living up to the hype in that way? Yeah. It Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. I mean, New York Comic Con is starting to give it a run for its money. They're like, like if San Diego's one, New York is one A, but it's still it's still the the uh, marker to reach for uh, is San Diego. All right. What? Well, how does Boston Comic Con? Uh, not Boston. What, what did we go to recently? We went to uh, we went to PAX East, right? We went to PAX East. Yeah. Yeah. How does PAX East stack up next to San Diego, like in terms of size? Uh, it was actually pretty similar. Really? Just based on the the floor size as yeah. well as the amount of big name exhibitors. Yeah. Yeah. See, with like PAX, because of the national convention, you get most of the you know large and international companies going sure. San Diego yeah. and New York and then 
you obviously get whatever sort of panels are going on besides you know down on the convention floor things like that yeah. with local cons it's more like local businesses you know you'll get comic artists and stuff that do national work but it's not like marvel is sending a huge booth to go to boston comic con or anything like that which they should but that's a different story that's yeah exactly <laughs> yeah hey marvel get down here will you get down to boston yeah, seriously you got fans here yeah for <laughs> real um so speaking of star wars did you catch any non-star wars stuff <laughs> um a couple of the uh, one of the panels I went to was a Marvel panel that a, it had a couple Star Wars things on it, but it yeah. was primarily just a a Marvel panel. It was the uh, Cup of Joe with um, Joe Casada. Yep, Chief my favorite of, uh, officer of Marvel. He's he's pretty he's pretty hilarious. He's my favorite artist. You know, I, I it, like I I will always look at him as an artist first because mm-hmm. he he's one of the guys like like. He was one of the new class of like artists, like when I was first reading comics. You know, there were, yeah, there were, you know, when you when you start reading comics, you, you you see your veterans that are already in place, especially back in the early '90s with uh, people like uh, John Byrne and uh, um, you know Kubert and and and, and mm-hmm. tons of names I could rattle off. But they're you know they 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 all have these long runs as as uh, as people on these books, and then it started to transfer over. You know. And uh, I don't think John Byrne was even an artist, but th- th- what does it matter? Um, yeah. I- I'm just saying, like, it- there was a transfer at some point, and Casada jumped into uh, X Factor, I think it was. Yeah, that was the first time I saw him. And, uh... Yeah, I think he mentioned that at the panel. Really? Yeah. Oh, I would have lo- loved to hear that. How he st- how he first, like, got his start into Marvel. Yeah, it was it was X Factor, because he had done Sword of Azrael before that. Uh, the mm-hmm. Batman graphic novel that came after Bane. And uh, that was cool too. And like this guy, his style just like captured my imagination. It, it blew me away in such a way. And uh, everything he does is like gold to me. I, I love, I love his work. And uh, you know, during the years I fell out of comics, it blew me away when I came back and found out, you know, Joe Casada, who no one knew, no one cared about when I was uh, when I when I was reading, mm-hmm. became became you know. A, a big shot of Marvel. The head, you know, he's a head guy. Yeah, it, 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 it's amazing. He's a yeah, chief yeah. creative officer. <laughs> yeah, I have. I actually have uh, assigned Joe Casada uh, X Factor. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. He's and the crazy thing is, is he still does uh, variant covers every once in a while. Oh, I love him. I really do. I need to get his Force Awakens oh, variant yeah. cover, which is I know, which is too. beautiful. Yeah. But I do have his uh, his Star Wars number one, which is unreal. Nice, unreal. Which one is the one he did? It's um, it's the gang, and they're all like okay. they're all in front, and they're on a platform f- okay. fighting. Nice. It, it, it it's distinctive Casada artwork. I mean, you look at yeah. it, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's really cool. It was a pretty funny, but you know, it's worth it for uh, for him. And uh, yeah, if I if sure. I get to meet him again, I would certainly get that signed. <laughs> um. Anyway, speaking of Star Wars, uh, yeah, I mean, I sometimes I wonder with San Diego Comic Con if being on the floor almost puts you at a disadvantage because you're not able to see everything. Um, like th- there were so many movie premieres that came out, there were TV premieres, there, there was so much, and I'm yeah. wondering sometimes if you're at even almost at a disadvantage to get it all while you're even at the show. Uh, yeah, I definitely felt that a little bit. Yeah, because with a lot of the Big trailers that came out. Trailer. Like, uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, Wonder Woman. I think they showed. I don't know if the Justice League one was a full trailer or just mm-hmm. sort of like a sort of a teaser sort of thing. I don't and know anymore. I don't know. There was um, another one for a Marvel movie. What was it? It Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah. yeah uh, Doctor Strange. Bogos. Yep. Doctor Strange got a different trailer. That's yeah. What it uh, was. Agents Shield. Shield, yep. yep. Uh, Captain Marvel, they announced Brie Larson is going to yeah. be playing her. Good peck. And, yeah. Yeah. And sort of while you're, like, on the floor going to things, if you don't get into those panels, yeah, you sort of just have to, like, when the convention's over for the night, you sort of just have to go online and, like, <laughs> sort of get your own recap of <laughs> what you missed throughout the day because you're seeing so many other different things. 
So it's not like a celebration where they have TVs that are pumping this stuff out. No, not really. No, that's not. It's not as cool. Not yeah. As cool. So, so what are the di- big differences between like celebration and San Diego Comic Con? Besides, you know, the Star Wars. Uh, besides the Star Wars, it's just sort of with San Diego. Yeah. There's all these different outlets that are there. So you have like IGN, Entertainment Weekly, Entertainment Tonight, um, all these big outlets who are doing their own sort of, they have their own areas where they're hosting interviews with people and doing things like going around the floor, getting exclusive footage, things like that. And with Celebration, they have like last year in Anaheim, they had the live stream that was in you know one separate location with a certain yeah. amount of hosts who did guests mm-hmm. and this year for london they had the star wars show which was new obviously so it was sort of like the same thing with it was peter and andy who are doing the hosting and they would get guests and things like that so sort of with celebration everything's a little more centralized like that yeah. whereas for san diego you have you know all the different outlets doing their own coverage so it's sort of like it's not really as centralized where you can focus on one thing you can focus on one thing here then another thing here and then you have to you know backtrack your steps and see what you missed on another one so that's sort of why there's so much going on at san diego compared to the sort of you know centralized sort of one track mindness that celebration has i hear you <laughs> yeah that, that, that's a big that's a bit definitely a big difference yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not saying either one's bad. It's just diff- similarities and differences. That's all. I'm assuming you think celebrations better. I enjoyed celebration a little more on just on like the coverage aspect. Yeah. But just like, you know, with San Diego, like the energy inside of the convention center and different, just the whole, the whole area is you like, you just get swept up in it. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. So Instead of talking about what you didn't see, <laughs> what did you yeah. see? What did I see? Yeah, I. You saw Star so, Wars. You you were very oh, yeah. Star Wars focused. There was there was plenty, you know. Considering that London was the week before, there was still a lot of Star Wars that uh, was at that was represented at San Diego, which was good. I think so. I I really feel like that. Um, I mean, I don't feel like there were huge revelations as far as uh, like movies or TV were concerned. They saved those for celebration. Yep. But m- more of the consumer phasing stuff. The, uh, exactly, the, yes. the, the toys and the publishing yep. and uh, things like that. Uh, licensees, I mean, they were all really in effect when it came to uh, when it, when it came to, to San Diego, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a lot easier for those sort of aspects and outlets to get represented at both Celebration and London, I mean, uh, San Diego, because there's so much more that they can do as opposed to just the movies and the TV show that it's like, okay, you can show a trailer here, have a panel, you know, with somebody from, you know, like the rebels one that they had at celebration. You can't really just do that a week later, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like they they could have done something. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess that, Lucasfilm is hanging on to stuff for their own conventions, which mm-hmm. makes sense, but... For sure, yeah. Yeah. I, I just like... I like to see the hype. I like to see... Uh, I like to see Lucasfilm be very cavalier and, uh, you know, just be, be renegades, right? Renegades, I, I, yeah. I like I like them to be renegades. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I just... I want, I want them to shock me, surprise me, do do crazy stuff um, mm-hmm. when, it come, when it comes to their marketing and, you know, take chances, right? That That's what yeah. it's all about. So, uh, that that that's kind of what I was hoping. I was like, "Come on, do do something crazy, right?" But mm-hmm. um, I, I wouldn't say I was disappointed in the least by what we got because the the, uh, the Hasbro panel that you attended, um, I was I was just checking your live you know your, your live tweet from mm-hmm. the panel, and it was unreal. It, what yeah. what was going on? Um, they really didn't. Hasbro definitely you know brought the thunder with this one. Oh yeah, they didn't. They were no holds barred with everything that they were announcing because. That panel was about, you know, 55 minutes long or so. Yeah. They had up on the stage, wherever, you know, the tables that they had for this um, stage, there was like, they had at least nine or 10 people on 
on the panel compared to like other panels that only have like maybe like four five or six people and they they're all different people who are doing different aspects of the Star Wars work at Hasbro. So you have like engineers and designers. You had a couple marketing people. There was two people who work at Lucasfilm that do licensing. So like it was, they they knew what they were doing when they came out with all those people because essentially every single person that was on there was able to bring something different to what, what Hasbro was essentially going to be announcing throughout the course of the panel. And yeah. they made a lot of cool announcements. So what do they what do they announce? So tell me, walk me through it. What 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 happened there from your from your own memory from your own recollection? What what happened? So first up, they just they went right into the black series. Yeah, like they did like a short little intro where they just announced everybody, and then they were like, okay, so yeah, you we know you're here to just see some toys, so let's just go for it. So like it was pretty cool how they just went for it. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. So the first one was the Qui-Gon Jinn that they announced. Nice, nice. So like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're talking figures here? We're talking figures? Uh, yeah. Hang on. Okay. Now, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I, I can't do that twice. Interdimensional rift will happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Black series. Black series. Sokka to me. So, yep. First up was Qui Gon. The yeah. way they, they sort of did it was there was like a screen where they show like your, you know, PowerPoint slides or whatever. And they, the way they did it was they showed just the silhouette of the character that they were announcing. Yeah. And they sort of had like the audience, you know, yell out and guess who they thought it was. So the first one was Qui-Gon. A handful of people got it. And then they went through and sort of talked about, you know, how they came to design the figure, what their inspiration was, um, what look they went with for the actual character, things like that. So it was pretty cool. So, you know, they showed like a couple slides of... Uh, like the 3D model renderings of what the character was looking like as they were going through the design process. And then like they would show actual uh, real life images of like Liam Neeson as, you know, at, next to the 3D renderings, like as the reference pieces and things like that. So it was pretty cool to see sort of like the background work that they actually go through when they're going through and making a new Black Series figure. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's pretty interesting work and how accurate they get. Um, and they're getting more accurate, I have to say. The uh, the exclusive figure for San Diego Comic-Con, the, uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, mm-hmm. is unreal. It, it's so yeah. amazing. And uh, we're going to have a big Needham got him next week when Chris is back. We get, yeah. a, we get a lot to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, spoiler alert. We got, we got some figures. <laughs> we got some yeah. figs. <laughs> oh man! Hey Mike, what you what you drinking tonight? What am I drinking? I am actually just drinking some water. I got sort of a little bit of a sore throat going on. So oh no, con crud? Yeah. Huh? You got the con, con crud? crud? Oh yeah. Really? Just a little bit. Really? I want to see a doctor. They get an ointment for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I have uh, I have some wine here, some vino. Yes. <laughs> Society. Mm, society. <laughs> the <laughs> finest three dollar wine. <laughs> Trader Joe's. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sorry. back. I'm back. Oh, oh. <laughs> what happened? I'm back. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Star Wars, wine. Sippy sip. Tell me. Tell me more about these black series figures. I'm gonna sip some wine. Sure. So. There was Qui-Gon, then we were able to see the all-new Royal Imperial Guard. Oh my gosh, this might be the figure of figures right now. It looks amazing. It's unreal. Unreal. It looks as good as, like, any Crimson Empire figure. 
that exactly. they would have made. It looks as good as Return of the Jedi. You know, mm-hmm. the gold standard for me for Royal Guards. Uh, That's what they said their inspiration was from was uh, Crimson Empire. Yeah, I could tell with because the, they did the armor. You know, the armor underneath exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, but you you can like I loved how they showed like you can go Crimson Empire on this or you can go straight up Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. You know, robes down. Yeah. It's all good. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. It's your flavor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so that's cool. What else? So there was the Royal Guard and Qui-Gon. Then we also had the Tusken Raider, which there is this one cool. guy in the crowd who was like obsessed with Tusken Raiders for some reason. Yeah. And like every time there was a Q&A, he would go up and ask about Tusken Raiders. <laughs> like, no lie, every single time. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, like, I don't know anyone who's, like, obsessed about, like, certain characters or anything like that. <laughs> not, a, yeah. not at all. Yeah, I don't get right? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did they talk about Oppo yet? When when do they talk about Oppo? Yeah, I know. I should have done that, huh? Yeah, yeah, Mike. You should. You didn't? This is news uh, to me. I know. I should have written, written it on my hand so they can be like, look down and be like, oh yeah, Oppo, let's go. Yeah, I've been like, hey, <laughs> when are you making the Oppo figure? <laughs> hey, pa- Pablo got back to us today, this week. Pablo uh-huh. Hidalgo suggested we make, th- that they make uh, old, they use old Globulus figures from G.I. Joe to make Oppo Rancis. It's a very similar figure, you know? That would be amazing. Yeah, do you ever see Globulus? Um, probably when I was a kid. Yeah, he's from G.I. Joe the movie. Haven't been recent. Yeah. He lives in Cobra okay. La. He was, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he came, he came from the, the, like, the ancient race that was in the Himalayas that Cobra came from. They're like snake people, and he was like, huh. a, he was like half snake. And he had like one eye, and one of the, one other thing was like a biotech thing. Okay. And he had a cool hand. He had, That'd like, be he had, easy like, to mod an oppo out of. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about Globulus was like, there was like a wire running through his tail. So you okay. could, uh, you like pose him. It was good. They should do that. They should absolutely do that. Yeah. Pablo said it. I, I agree. Exactly. That's not my idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, senior creative executive Pablo Hidalgo of Lucasfilm. That's his idea. Mm-hmm. Make it happen. Mm-hmm. We know you listen. <laughs> I don't even know who I'm talking to. We know you listen, though. Yeah. yeah. And get it out there, guys. You know, get it out there. Get to social media. Let's talk about getting Oppo as a Black Series figure. You know? Let's talk about that. Hashtag, Hashtag Oppo. Oppo. You got it. What's that again, Mike? Hashtag Oppo. Hashtag Oppo. That's it. You know? Let Hasbro know. There's, there's love for, for Oppo. You know, we, we tried. Our voices were heard in the uh, the Black Series poll. Did, we didn't win yet. We, we You know, we're up against it. We really are. But we're going we're gonna to make it happen. One step at a time. Yeah. So you were telling me about this guy who was just obsessed with Tuscan Raiders, huh? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it was at the end of the Hasbro panel. He asked, you know, he was asked a question about if they were going to do anything, you know, more for Tuscan Raiders, whether it was, like, because that's going to be a Black Series, and then, like, maybe three and three quarter, they'll be coming along, or whatever. And then after the Hasbro panel, there was the... Um, collectible licensee panel that was featured, you know, Sideshow, yeah. Kobukia, all like those high-end companies, EFX, and mm-hmm. again, he he asked them, be like, hey, are you guys ever going to make any, you know, Tuscan Raiders maybe? Did he ever like answer with like like doing like the, the noise, like the <laughs> Did he ever do that? <laughs> he should have. He was wearing a Tuscan Raider t-shirt, though. He should have done that. that that's kind of like, that's what I expect from a Tuscan Raider fan. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right, more figures. What happened? More figures. Yeah. So the biggest one that got the most um, the biggest, joy out of the, the biggest crowd. Pop? Biggest pop? Biggest pop from the pop audience? Yeah. Was Hera, obviously. Really? Hera, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're making Hera. All oh, right. Yeah, just just in time for her to have like a uh, a character model change in this, this season. Thank God. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Right? So it's been like two years that, that we've been asking for her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, about since that. the beginning of the show, no big deal or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, why don't they? Why don't they just do a wave of, of all the figures? I don't, I don't get it. Do they, right? were, they, yeah. were they trying to pass off like how hard it is to like make a figure? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry if this is uncouth, but I don't. You're the you're the company that makes the money. 
<laughs> you know? Let's make the figures. I, you, you, you do it successfully when you actually do it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear the, the, the whine. <laughs> I just don't. It's not it's not that hard. You know? You, you're making money off these guys. You know, except for when you make like a million Zuvios. Exactly, just right? Just figure it out. Just be better. Just do better at it. Mm-hmm. Do better at it. You know? Don't make me have to go to eBay to find like a decent figure. You know? Don't make me like be in like the back alleys of the internet trying to find a, a an Emperor's Royal Guard. You know? <laughs> Not cool. Make your figures. Get them in stores. That's the job. All right, rant over. What else? Rant over. <laughs> yeah. So probably the other biggest pop that came from the uh, Hasbro was for the uh, probably, probably Thrawn. shouldn't be crossing the streams of the pops and the <laughs> the Hasbro. Fun, oh, fun, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to use like wrestling talk, and that that's not working because we're, we're talking like we're, you know we're gonna confuse people with like Funko, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's Dengai Dan's territory. Yeah. All right. What else? But, uh, what 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 other figures after Hera? The one, the one that got besides Hera, the biggest one was the Thrawn three and three quarter reveal. Yeah, it looks nice. Looks yeah, nice. I mean, the paint's nice. The white of the uniform really goes well with the you know his blue skin. So yeah. it's it's a really nice looking figure for, you know, what they can do in the three three and three quarter. Oh, they can do a lot with the three and three quarter. Don't let them tell you they can't. They just choose to make the Rebels figures very simplistic. And yeah. uh I I don't I don't think that's like a win, like overall. But I mean it's very much in line with that, and it's it's good initiative on them actually making a Thrawn figure. It's very cool. Very oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. Are they gonna they make them all? I think are they gonna make them all? He's in two seasons of the uh, the show so far. That's true. They've only made they made one. They're they're gonna make, well they're making one that was based off of last year that we that got announced at what New York Toy Fair I think it was. Oh right 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 yeah they were yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that one's ex exactly released yet, but it's probably coming along. Well you know there's a lot of gall with them having you know revealing new figures when the ones they revealed last year still haven't come out. Still haven't come out exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like, crazy. Because what? Because what else did they release? What else, what else did they reveal? Um, they revealed the winner of the Black Series fan vote. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, because Jane is solo. Jane is solo. Okay. Um, not you know, I I'm, I wasn't a huge Legends guy about the, about the Jane is solo. Uh, so I know some people voted for that, and they are they they like that. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'm probably not going to get it, but you know, people clearly wanted it. So exactly, I mean, people clearly true. wanted Oppo. They didn't, we didn't get that yet. We're going you right. know, it's going to be our time soon. Our time down here. It mm -hmm. will be. It will be. I have faith. I have faith. As I'm choke. They choke. <laughs> It'll happen. All right. What else after Janus? So I'm sure you saw. The all new ATACT. Wasn't vehicle. there another another fan? Another another fan winner, as well. Wasn't there another? No. Yeah, I thought there was. Like another legends one. Another, another legends one, right? Lando. Jesus, of course. <sighs> Make Lando Black series. Boom. Lando Black series. Now we're talking. Wasn't there another uh, another another winner though? No. It was just Jaina, and then there was Star Killer, but I don't think that they said that they were making the uh, Star Killer. No, I don't. Uh, okay, maybe not. I'm pretty sure he was the one that came in uh, second place. Okay, that that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Okay, so no Star Killer, but just Jaina. Yeah, yeah, that's the that was the Black Series was Hera, Lando, Qui Gon. Royal Guard and the Jaina Solo and Tuscan cool. Raider. I can dig that. So, that's, a, that's a that's a decent wave, I'd say. Yeah, not bad. I mean, no new figures, nothing from Force Awakens, and nothing from uh, Rogue One. Rogue One, yep. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of kind of weird, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, like this is wave. This is wave plan. one. I was gonna say I'm not sure what their plan is for announcing. On Force Friday, is it going to be just a complete surprise, or are we going to get something like a month ahead of time? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they they sh they can't reveal the characters yet, so yeah, that makes sense. What it is. Um, 
But, you know, I, I, I thought that, you know, for this is this, that's what I, I was curious about. Is this wave one or is it just like a bunch of figures that are coming next year? You know, that that's yeah. what I wasn't sure of. Uh, you, you didn't get any sense of that? They, yeah, you know, they really didn't specify if this was like an actual wave or if these were just essentially new figures that were going to be yeah. releasing sort of intermittently, you know, just sort of depends on what their release schedule is that they want to do it, I guess. Because depending on if they want to take away from with Rogue One characters, they probably won't release it until like middle of next year or anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean... They they still haven't got Revan and Hera out. I mean, there's a whole wave that they 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 announced from last year. Last they, year, they haven't got done yet. Which yeah, that was supposed to be like summer 2016, and you know, guess what? It's it's summer. It's it's mid it's midway through summer 2016, they're, and they're nowhere to be seen. You no, know, not at all. Yeah, yeah. They did have the um. Raven and Sabine's down at the Hasbro booth of the uh, exhibition floor. Oh yeah, and, I saw I saw pictures, and the Sabine looks incredible. Oh yeah, it looks great. I like how they do the lifelike um, figures for all the rebels mm. with the six inch. Yeah. yeah, really cool. Um, I loved how they did the uh, the Kanan. Kanan was fantastic. Ahsoka was fantastic. So yeah, I, I really like that that style. I wish they translated that into the three and three quarter. Um, yeah. That would have been awesome. So, oh yeah, well. they definitely have the ability to do it if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah, it would it would have been good, but uh, oh well, oh well. Uh, what about exclusives? Did you get any exclusives? Um, not for the toys, um, or the Hasbro or anything. I did do some recon for a couple exclusives for on the merchandise end. Yeah. I didn't get the um, socks that I wanted. You know, um, you've seen the Stance, the uh, Stance socks brand. Sure. Okay. And they had like a whole section sort of in the Star Wars pavilion where all like the licensees were like tops and um, not We Love Fine. It was um, Lounge Fly. Uh, oh, okay. Sphero with the BB-8. So they were set up in there, and they had like the uh, the like all red Imperial Royal Guard socks. And yeah. For some reason, I just I kept waiting. I was like, yeah, I'll get them later. Uh, I gotta go here. I'll get them later. And by the time I get back, they were sold out. So I was like, damn. Um, but I talked to somebody there, and they said that they're gonna be coming online, you know, within the next couple months. So yeah, they got like a all like a crazy amount of those stance socks coming out. That's that, cool. You know, like the character ones. So like there's, there's Ray, Finn, Poe, Stormtroopers, Kylo Ren, Chewie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not bad. So Not bad. That's pretty cool. Of, a lot of, a lot of you know, like merchandise sort of like that. And that um, was in and around the, the Star Wars pavilion, which was pretty cool. Oh, tell me about the, uh, the, the Walker you saw too. Oh yeah. The ATACT, which is, absolutely incredible because it moves and makes sounds and you can control it with your phone. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So dur during the Hasbro panel, like right at the end is when they brought it out and they put it on top of the table there and like out of nowhere, it just started walking and everybody <laughs> was like, holy crap. That's amazing. And like it's making noises like authentic ATAT -AT noises and in the in like the head of the walker it's got a little uh slot where you can put like four or five reloadable lasers that it shoots out cool. um in the back where like the cargo area is like the doors open up on it and you can put figures in there and then also the cargo thing can come out of the top and it's sort of like on a cable like a like a retractable line that okay. you can uh, like put it on the ground with and everything and then the it's going to be coming with three different figures. It's going to come with a a driver, a imperial astronaut, driver, a pilot. <laughs> no, 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 drive. I've been doing this all at work all the time. Any any word that ends in er, we've just been like, 
repeating it, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Driver. <laughs> <laughs> it gets ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, sorry. Ner nervous tech. Go, go on. Go on. So, yeah. I had the uh, ATACT pilot. Comes with a Imperial Astromech and a Jin Erso figure. So those are the ones that are packaged with the Walker itself. Oh, no kidding. But it's, yeah. But it's three and three quarter scale. So when all the other characters and like troopers come out, you'll be able to essentially just make like your own diorama with uh, all the three and three quarter figures. So are these figures going to be exclusive to this figure, uh, this vehicle? Um, I think the pilot and the astromech maybe. The Jin uh. so is probably going to be just a regular one that you'll be able to get. I hope not, but that's going to be a real pain. It's going to be a little need him, got him there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, that's cool. They, they didn't say outright if anything was going to be exclusive to it, but that was sort of the sense you got with how yeah. they were presenting it, I would say. Did they explain why they haven't made a Luke Skywalker figure yet? Um, they sort of gave us the, uh, like, Dave Filoni runaround saying, you know, there's, you know, they, they essentially just said, we're working on it. That's weak. That's yeah. weak. I'm sorry. That's weak, Hasbro. It, it really <laughs> is. Th that should have been out December 18th. It, it should have yeah. been out then. Exactly. Sorry. It's Luke Skywalker. You know? Like, yeah. it's Luke Skywalker. You make your Luke Skywalker figures to sell you Star Wars films. You do that. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Like, it's great that they made a Qui-Gon Jinn, but Qui-Gon Jinn's also had his time. We gotta get we gotta get more Force Awakens figures in here. Yeah. I want the Grungar. I want Batsin Natel. I want I want all those wacky I want all the wacky aliens from from, from Maz's Castle. Yeah. 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 I want Maz Kanata in six inch. Come on. I know, exactly, yeah. Get on it. Seriously, have you marching orders? Make make Luke Skywalker. I want him now. <laughs> You're months late. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Star Wars film with no Luke Skywalker. You know, stop making Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett for like two seconds and, <laughs> and stop a, making Awakens Crimson Luke Corsair. You know, new generation, termination. <laughs> Gotta get this done. Ah, <sighs> can fight it up. Can fight it up. <laughs> All right. We actually saw a pretty cool uh, Crimson Corsair cosplayer, which is awesome. That's awesome. It's a good time. Good time. Yeah, I hope he's at celebration. Would like, love to see that. All right, all right, Mike. Let's uh, let's take a break and uh, talk about. Let's talk about some life debt. What does that sound? Sounds pretty damn sweet to me. There you go. Hey, Mike. Yo. You ever hear about Audible? Audible. Audible.com. It's a website, right? For listeners of Bruising Blast, is offer, Audible is offering a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial to give Mike Audette the opportunity to check with their service. Did you know that? I had no idea. You know it now. You can check out Life Debt by Chuck Wendig. You know the book we're about to talk about. You haven't read it if you haven't read it. Mike's already read it. If you haven't read it, you can do a Life Debt by Chuck Wendig or any other audiobook for free. Just go to audibletrial.com slash bruisingblasters. I set that up. Audible has over 180,000 titles, so you can you can get a ton of stuff. You don't want to? You keep the book forever. That's it. Mike, what do you think of that? You think about that? What do you think about that deal? That is just knocking my it's socks good. off. It's good. You're right. I heard what you said. It's good. Yeah. All you have to do, go to audibletrial.com slash bruisingblasters for your free audiobook.
Hey, it's Greg Grunberg, Snap Wexley from Star Wars. I didn't fly an X-Wing, I flew a double XL wing. And you are listening to Brews and Busters. Blasters. Oh. <laughs> and you are listening to Brews and Blasters. Brilliant. Cheers, Greg. Thanks. Have a good day. See you later. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Before we start anything, I need to give a huge shout out to my good buddy Adam Parker. Got us at Greg Grenberg uh, uh, audio cue right there. He also nabbed me a whole bunch of Celebration Europe convention exclusives. So, Adam, you're the man. Big shout out. Had to get it on there. Mike, you still with me? I am, buddy. All right. Mike, how do you do on, on those convention exclusives? You get any? Get that Obi Wan? No. No. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna be suffering through those lines and waiting overnight. So. Wow, you had to wait overnight to get them. There was there was people who they would wait and wait overnight. Uh, you'd get up at like six. Uh, they you know they'd line they queue you up. You'd get a ticket. Then you would have to wait in another line to get another ticket. And then you would go down on the floor and wait there until they were ready to uh, <laughs> to call your number. That's banana land. Yeah, it's, it's banana it's land. Pretty insane. It's not insane. It's banana land. Banana land. All right. <laughs> so when you were at San Diego Comic Con, you met a very special person by the name of uh, Chuck Wendig. Right? Chucky Wendig. Yes. That's that's. You guys, you can call him that? That, that. I don't know. Maybe not to his face. Yeah, pro- probably don't want to do that. But uh, Chuck Wendig. Yeah, you met him. What's he like? He's he like if you follow him on Twitter, he is as funny on Twitter as he is in real life. Does he talk in all caps? Uh, depends. Sort of depends the subject, but I could see you know. Based on what he was saying, sometimes he's talking in all caps in real life. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm not that cool to figure that out. But <laughs> it, it, it was just an idea. It was just an idea. I don't yeah. know. I don't know these things. I'm relying on you. You were there. You met the man. So. Yeah. He's he's honestly just a really nice guy. Did he have anything to say about life debt? Um. He did wow. A little bit, yeah. He was. <laughs> he did. What What did he say, Mike? What did he say? He... What did he... I'm, I'm, I'm Kevin dying here. Come on. Uh, what did uh, he save he me? His was... information. <laughs> I asked him a few questions about it, and um, he was just talking about how, you know, the writing process of for Life Debt and Empire's End essentially became blew right open yeah. after Force Awakens came out. Really? What, what like blew... The, the... Like the access... Yeah, exactly. Yep. No kidding. That's mm-hmm. very, like, very interesting. The, like the training wheels came off when he was really able to, you know, dig deep and get more into the characters and the story once that, like, the moratorium for The Force Awakens was over. Ah. Interesting. <laughs> Which, if you've read the book, like, you can you can completely tell that that's, that's, that's pretty evident, uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to get into it. We uh, we waited till now to uh to talk about life debt just in case you you haven't read it. If you haven't read it, you should. It's a good book. Um check it out. It's you can get it everywhere. You can get it get it on Amazon. Sorry, a little coffin fit there. Time for a sippy sip, I think. Sippy sip. Sippy sip. Sippy sip. Ugh. Okay, you can get it anywhere. It's on Kindle. It's on. It's on Audible. It's it's everywhere you need it to be, at your local bookstore. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's fantastic. So if you haven't read it, go read it and come back and listen to Mike and I talk about it because we have a lot to say. But uh, so the Train Wheels, I find it interesting. The Train Wheels came off, um, and I've, I have so many questions for Lucasfilm Publishing. I would love to talk to them about the 
what like their job of publishing, the restraints they put on, the restraints they don't have, uh, what's changed, like in a real sense since you know 2014 and the old EU became Legends. What hasn't changed, you know, what's what's carried, like what methods and, and standards and practices have carried over, and what was you know what's really being drawn from scratch and. I'm not, sh- you know, sometimes I wonder, sometimes I wonder uh, just how much has actually changed. And Life Dad is a good example of doing a lot of really forward thinking things and doing a lot of good things. But yet at the same time, yeah, I mean, the, the binders were definitely on old Chuck uh, at, at certain places and you, and it, you could tell. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that's you know, a, a fair assessment of things. Um, but before we get too critical, I want to talk about, you know, what we liked about the book first. Cause I liked, I liked the book. I enjoyed reading it. Um, the best thing I can say about, about Wendig's books is that I enjoy reading them. I, I, I they're a pleasurable book to read. Uh, oh, absolutely. To pick up Damn. the book and just, just dig in. Uh, they read fast. They read fun. They're interesting. Uh, he brings you right into the moment, which I like. A lot, uh, and and I, th- I think that he achieves. He, he's able to achieve uh, certain things that other writers aren't. So that, that's kind of what I like about it. What do, what do you think, Mike? Yeah, I agree. It's the sort of the that the tense he writes in, which is the first person present. Yeah, Absolutely. not first person. Third, third person. Third person present. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he? the benefit is it brings you right into the action. So it feels like you're there. Yeah. And that's what makes them the reads for, you know, aftermath and life debt. So engrossing is that you like, you so much feel like you're inside of the story. You're there with the characters, you, you, you know, you're in flying in the back of a ship with them. And it really is able to draw you into the galaxy and make you feel a part of it. So I have to say, I think Wendy's books translate into audiobook superbly because of of the of the way he writes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he writes to he writes for books to be read aloud, and there's no better way to put it than that. His books are often I've found so much more e- more easily digested and so much easier to read and just so much more interesting because of the way he writes it, almost like a script in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I, I, I love listening to his audiobooks, especially um, versus print. M- many books I'll, I'll take, you know, half and half, or one no better than the other. I really feel strongly that Wendig's books are great for the for audiobook, and uh, I, I love I love reading his books that way. Um, yeah, and, and which was good with this one too, because there wasn't a lot, ton of lead time. Um, on the book before before release date, so it was mm-hmm. uh, it was great to get in, dig into the audiobook, and uh, rip through that. And I did. I, I read the book one and a half times, I'd say. Um, having having gone through a, a, a full second uh, listening, but it's uh, it, it's 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 definitely fun to uh, to listen to. You check yeah. out the audiobook. Um, not for life debt, but I did uh, re-listen to aftermath in the lead up, so you know cool. I get more familiar with the character get reintroduced to the characters and sort of his style and everything like that because yeah i hadn't read or listened to aftermath since it came out yeah last so fall good, yep yeah it was a good refresher to get back into it refresh you know, in like the week or two before life that came out yeah no definitely definitely um i was not able to do that because i have this other show called the dune cast which yeah i'm, I'm reading i'm reading dune books too so there's, there's a lot of reading on my plate right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You should check that out, Mike. You might like it. I think I will, yeah. Yeah, Dunecast. Yeah. Dune, Dunecast. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned the characters, because what I remember most from Aftermath <coughs> is that Nora Wexley's team had a lot of J names, and... You know, I found myself halfway through Aftermath being like, wait, who the heck are they Ooh. talking about? Mm-hmm. Jazz and Jom? Yep. I, I was like, what? what? Why, <laughs> why did he do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, it, it drove me nuts. 
Um, especially because I, I didn't love uh, John, whatever his name was. Uh, John Burrell. John Burrell. Yeah. 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 Boilerplate tough guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He reminds me of that guy on Prison Break uh, that was in The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. The, oh, okay. the, fl- the flame guy. You know who I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not 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 Captain Cold, but his uh, his partner. That's that's who John Burrell reminds me of. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Jesse Ventura from Predator too. Oh man, <laughs> that would be cool. That'd be real cool. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna make me fall <laughs> in love with him all over again. Oh. <laughs> Jesse Jesse the Body in yeah. uh, Predator is is one of the finest you know acting roles. Oh yeah! In the history of film, I mean, let's, <laughs> let's be honest right now. Uh, I mean, amazing, amazing, and I know if Chris was here, he'd say the same. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have him. You have uh, Jasamari, who mm-hmm. is a Zabrak female yep. bounty hunter, which is like literally like the late '90s all crammed, like early 2000s, just like crammed all into one character. Um, yeah. Then you have uh, Nora Wexley, who was the Y-wing bomber. In uh, in Return of the Jedi, that let that flew in with the Millennium Falcon and Wedge Antilles. Yep, yep. You have uh, his, her son, Temin Snap Wexley, who uh, Snap Greg Grunberg in The Force Awakens. <laughs> you have uh, you have his you have his uh, B one battle droid that's uh, modified, Mister Bones, who's uh, like wacky. The best. Yeah, didn't have a ton to do in this uh this book though. No, a lot more to do yeah. in, in aftermath. He was, yeah, he had a more bigger part in Aftermath. And then, and then you have my personal favorite, uh, Sinjir Rathvelis. Oh, yeah. The ex-Imperial torturer and uh, information uh, information guy. Loyalty <laughs> officer. Loyalty officer. That's the, that's the name they invented. <laughs> uh, yeah, who was, uh, you know, a, a, dil- a dilettante in, uh, Imperial uh, brought low from the fall of the Empire and searching for redemption with this ragtag group of uh, rebels searching for their way in the New Republic now that the war mm. is over. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think that the Wendig likes Rath Valos quite a bit, and it, it yep. shows because he's devoted a lot of development to him, and I, I feel like he he did a lot. He did a lot with that character where... I don't feel like the rest of the characters really moved forward very, very, very well. Uh, Jasamari and, and John Burrell, I, I still don't know why they're really there, aside from just people, to, people for other people to talk to. Yeah, you know, like I, 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 I kind of feel like they're cookie cutter characters. They can be thrown away uh, if they're if neither are in the books. The next book doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I, if if someone's a big Jasamari fan, let me know. Uh, I, I just don't I, I just don't see it. Uh, if, if, even more so, if someone's a big John Burrell fan, bro, where are my John Burrell fans at? Bring, <laughs> I know, bring I those know. out. <laughs> I, are you uh, are you worried that he that he lost his eye? You feel bad about that? Spoiler alert! By the way, I already, yeah. I, I already gave the spoiler alert. We can talk about anything. Yeah. It's a fair game here. All right, you know. So I, I mean I don't know I don't I don't know about John Burrell, uh, I, I I think it might have been, it's not like it's not like when they wasted time on the book, mm-hmm. talking about them they it was interesting but I don't know they it it didn't it didn't they they didn't they didn't cut to the core in, in aftermath and I don't I don't think they really he de- he developed them more in life debt but at the end of the book I was like what what are they doing Yeah they're sort of I mean. They're, they're, sort of they're just a part of the crew. They're sort of just yeah. They're ba- they're they're more background characters now than they ever were. Yeah, yeah. Based on you know everything else that was introduced throughout the book, where you get new people sort of essentially just taking their pl- their role, not yeah. their roles, taking place of their uh, page time essentially, as you could call it. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, even Nora, not much change. She has a you know, potentially budding romance with Wedge Antilles. And, yep. you know, she's like... I love that part. Yeah, she's like best buds with uh, with Leia now, too. Yep. You know, uh, which is cool. Um, so they've made her close... Cl- 
closer to the the main action than mm-hmm. I ever thought that we'd get, which is good. Good good to tell that story. Um, easy to tell the story of the main characters by having them be so intertwined with the new characters that publishing has introduced. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's cool. Alright, let's talk about the Imperials. I I like that there's a difference between what the Empire was. It's not just like rando uh, you know, Empire status quo anymore. The the Empire is really crumpling, and I feel like there's more there's more going on with the structure and nature of the infighting in the Empire than mm-hmm. what is going on in the New Republic, which ends up feeling a lot like Bloodline when they start talking about it more, if you ask yep. me. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, it's sort of how we see the, the sort of the next conclusions of what happens in Aftermath at the end where uh, all those Imperials are essentially just taken out and they're gone. Yeah. So now yeah. with the new... Uh, the fleet admiral Rax, Gallius Rax, yeah, Gallius Rax, and him introducing his shadow council. It's like you can sort of see the seeds of the first order being planted right here. Yeah, you, I mean, let's now. Now here's here's where we get into it. Are the seeds of the first order planted in Bloodline, or are they planted here? What are we talking about? You know, because I feel like it's pretty firm. So they were establishing bloodline. Mm-hmm. You know? But there's something going on here. There's something with Galley's racks. There's something yeah. there. Um, you can see some of the sort of things where he was saying, like, the Empire needs children and things like that. That's true. Oh, that's true. I mean, the the ideas, the precedent was all mm-hmm. there. So And then... So it, it it's, a, makes, it's... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to find ties to Shattered Empire, which is pretty much yep. happening at the same time as this. Yeah, exactly. You know, and there are plenty of mentions of things that happen in Shattered Empire, too. Like the uh, the robots with the uh, the video messages uh, that happen in Shattered Empire, which is a really oh, weird bar. Oh, the Palpatine bar. messages, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's all over this. And mm-hmm. I, I really like what they're doing with uh, the Imperial Remnants and, and how Rax, Gallius Rax is bringing them together. But let me ask you, did you... Th- did you feel a little let down that it wasn't Thrawn? Um, you know, not really. Did you think it was Thrawn at the end of after- Aftermath? When it was the end, I thought it was. Everyone did. Everyone thought it was. But then when they introduced it as this guy, Admiral Rex, I was just like, you know, I, it's like, I had sort of loved and hated him at the same time because yeah. he was such a great character, but like his villainy and his just, creepiness was like just like made your skin crawl you know let me ask you so here's the here's the question that you'll probably never we'll, we'll probably never get an answer to if we ask it do you think Wendig intended that to be thrown and then schedules changed and things changed with what was going on in rebels do you think that actually happened and now we have gallius rex i think there's probably a good chance that that could be what it was I mean, think because, about the way that it was introduced in mm-hmm. in, in Aftermath. In, yeah. I mean, I, I, if you... if you The way he's introduced in Rebels, is it, like, exactly the same way? With his back turned? Yep. You know? Hands behind his back, looking off into the distance. Yeah, looking at all the, the, the cultural stuff and listening to music. and Yep. It, it's, like, the exact same thing. And I have to wonder if, you know, Thrawn was originally intended to also be in Life Debt because they knew he was coming up in Rebel Season 3. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like there was something there and Gallius Rax got introduced to be like a buffer um, for that because they weren't going to use Thrawn in this time period after the Empire and they were going to use him in Rebels instead in yeah. the earlier time period. I, I feel like that happened. Um... But, you know, when one door closes, one door opens. And Gallius yeah. Rax is cool. Um, did At the very first interlude, when they're talking with the boy from Jakku. Yep. Did, did you think it was... So we, we see this interlude at the beginning of the book. 
and then at the end of the book we see the the other half of it and we find yeah, out at the yeah in the beginning i think it was actually in the prologue yeah yeah that's that's about right yeah and uh did, did you it, think it was Gallius rax it didn't t- it took me about like 80 something pages in and then there was like a passage in there on page like i don't know it was like right around like 80 81 82 yeah where they mention something that ties to the prologue and i was like oh okay. yeah, yeah 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 and then i was like okay it's him it's definitely him when i heard purple cloaks i was just thinking of those guys from return of the jedi exactly yeah the, and i'm uh, like ru- yeah the ruling council yeah yeah and i was like oh that's the emperor yeah um which was cool and the audiobook does the the final interlude with the emperor so well oh i'm gonna have to get it for that then yeah you you gotta check it out it's really really cool um so gallius rex becomes like not an apprentice but a uh i don't know maybe an maybe an apprentice i don't know just a yeah. guy a guy in in uh in palpatine's secret you know inner circle yeah he, he's you know not raised by palpatine but from an early age he is uh in the Empress Privilege. Which so what is, did you think about the sort of the subplot of uh, Ray Sloan trying to figure out who Rax actually is? I liked it. I thought that was pretty cool. I did too. Yeah. I was still kind of waiting for like a Thrawn thing going on though. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, you're actually Thrawn and you have blue skin. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I was waiting for like some weird thing like that. But whatever. Whatever. Um... Yeah, I sort of like that little like detective story that was going on like throughout the course of the uh, book too. Okay, let's talk about Ray Snow Ray Sloan now. Let's talk about Ray Sloan. So we've seen a lot of Ray Sloan in 2016 and 2015. Yeah, you know she's over Even, the books, she's over the comic, she's uh she's everywhere. This race, yeah. this Ray Sloan character, Grand Admiral Ray Sloan. For now, yeah, <laughs> potentially Emperor at mm-hmm, one point. Yeah. Emperor Ray, like, what, what, what are we doing here? And, uh, it, I, I have to ask you, Mike, is Ray Sloan a hero? Is, is Ray Sloan someone that we're supposed to be rooting for? See, that's, I honestly, I think so. But she's not. She's but a exactly bad, that. she's a bad guy. <laughs> you want to know, you want to know how I know? Well, number one, she's part of the Empire. And not like a low level yeah. like Finn, you know, in the First Order. She's yeah. like one of the top brass. Number two, she hated Kanan. She's like tracked down Kanan for years. Yeah. Right? Like vicious, cold. I believe she was in Lost Stars and not very nice in that. Yeah. Uh, and, and oh yeah, she tortured um, Wedge Wedge Antilles. In like yeah, like a rever, you know, damaged him irrevocably. <laughs> <laughs> right? Ray Sloan's not a good person. So what are we doing here rooting for Ray Sloan in this book? I don't get it, and I know Wendig has us rooting for her. And I don't yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that everything has to be black and white in Star Wars. Uh you know, the, Star Wars is very black and white about good guys versus bad guys in a lot of ways. But I don't know. I think, like, in the sequel trilogy era, there is room for Shades of Grey. I do. But let's get our story straight on who this character is. I don't want it to turn into a, a George R. R. Martin story where everyone's evil and they're all just characters we were invested in, even though sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to know who our bad guys are. And we need to figure out who we're rooting for and why we're rooting for them. I have no reason to root for Ray Sloan. uh, Other than she shows up everywhere. And and that's cool. I like to hear from her. I like to see what's going on with her. But, you know, I like Mm -hmm. to hear from Tarkin, too. I mean, Tarkin's a bad dude. When I was reading the Tarkin book, I was rooting for him, like, in the way I root for a bad guy. You know? Like... Exactly. You know, Ray Sloan and, and Nora fight in this book. And it's it's weird, <laughs> yeah. You know, then 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 Ray Sloan's like, all right. Here's another part. In the audiobook, 
Ray, you know, Ray Sloan has to fight her, uh, her uh, attache who, who, who betrayed her, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, or her assistant. And, uh, so, so this is like fight on like catwalks, right? Is, is that, is that, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, it was up in like the, um, like the viewing area where they're having like the the parade or whatever. Yeah, it, it's real high hop. You know, it's uh, you, know, you, you can picture these balconies of yeah of these of these uh these Star Wars cities. It. Yeah, and um, as I'm listening to the audiobook, you know how they have the Star Wars books play like music in the back. I'm hearing yep. like I'm hearing like the Rebel theme. I'm hearing like the Force theme. Like, dun, That's dun, 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 dun. like Ray Sloan shoots and it's like, like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's Luke's music, you know? Yeah, like yeah. the whoa. That, that this is he. She tortured Wedge. You can't. You can't be playing that music. You know that. That's reserved for for, for heroes. Yeah. You know. And and, and Grand Admiral Ray Sloan is, is firing. No. 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 That's not mm. what happens. You know, I don't know. It, it, it was a really weird, disjointed moment. And I'm not, you know, you can't, I, I can't judge Chuck Wendig for the for the music choice on uh, on the audiobook. Yeah. But there was I'm definitely sure some. I'm not he's the one the, the, no, uh, describing which ones. No, they, they have their own producers, but. Yeah. There, there is, it was, it was, it was a weird, disjointed moment. And I think that, you know, publishing in general mm-hmm. and. This the story group in general needs to figure out what they're doing with Ray Sloan and how they characterize her because it's very dangerous turning uh, turning these characters into heroes to be idolized when they're also hurting the hero. It, it diminishes our our true heroes. Yeah, it's I, sort of like she's you're rooting for her against the other Imperials because they're like irreparably bad. Yeah, but why? 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 Why would I root for Ray Sloan over anyone else? And then you're rooting for like the actual rebels against her. It's sort of like she's in the middle. Yeah, but yeah, like I, I, I yeah, I, I, I get that. It's it's an interesting thing to to have a have an imperial um, protagonist in a book. It's it's an interesting mm-hmm. thing, yeah. but you know, don't. I you have to remember she you know I think they probably could have done more to make her make us remember she's also a bad guy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't feel like that resonated a ton. Um I mean even when she compares herself to Leia, I feel like uh, Yeah. She she is I, no, she is no Princess Leia. No, yeah. I she's think no, there's in aftermath as opposed to life that there's a little more um of the sense that you get, she is a you know a real bad, really on the bad side. Yeah. Where she's talking about you know we're we lost here. We we're the empire. We build Death Stars. You know. Yeah. Like, we lost. Like you didn't really get that. That sense didn't really transfer over into life. That from aftermath. Uh, aside from the way she abhorred Gallius Rax's plan to, to use terrorism. Basically, you know, yeah. that that's what she abhorred. She's like, no, we conquer with a with a hammer. We don't mm-hmm. we don't do a knife in the back. And I was like, oh, yep. that's cool. Uh, you, you, you're ridiculous, but that's cool. Um, all that aside, I loved reading about her. I thought she's a fascinating character. She's a very interesting character to follow. Yeah. Um, I, I just think they need to get it straight on what she is. And, uh, you, you know, don't don't make her out to be my hero because she's yeah. not. Um, I have my heroes. They're they're on the other side. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's cool, and I, I'm I like the idea that they did with all of these uh, all these fleets being hidden in nebula. Really cool yeah. idea. Um, heck, they even talked about what's out what's out past the galaxy. You know, a couple of passages there. People leaving the galaxy. Yeah. Do you hear that too? I like that a lot. You know, I, I I always I always wonder about what's outside there. And uh, it's glad to hear them touch upon that. However, mm-hmm. what they say is in direct contrast to what <laughs> you know happens in Bloodline, where, where the, those uh, Amaxian warriors who are not from the galaxy, they're from outside the galaxy, come in oh, yeah. and they uh, they help out the First Order, which is 
I, I don't I don't know how you how you marry those two ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there's like uh, you know there's 25 years of timeline to figure. Yeah, I mean there's some there, but that out. <laughs> yeah, you you get you got to have that continuity, right? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So. All right, we're, we're we're talking around the big, the big things that happen in this mo- in, in this movie in this book, That's because right, yeah. all all this is kind of like set up for the the real. I mean, I mean the the real meat of the book is about Han and Chewie and the liberation of Kashyyyk. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you, you have like Nora getting into jams, and it's all leading towards finding. At the beginning of the book, Han is missing. Um, yeah. Le- Leia's looking for Han. She sends Nora to find him. And uh, they find him in a prison. He was look- gathering information to try and get in- get into another prison. Uh, <coughs> so she- he could rescue Chewie. Um, how, d- how did Han read to you? Did you feel like Wendy captured Han Solo? Yeah. I liked... Uh, I really liked his portrayal. Yeah. I, I-, I feel like... At some points, it was really Han, and at some points, there were things that he was saying that just didn't sound like it either. Um, I mean, no one can get Han Solo perfect, I don't think. Yeah. Um, people come damn near close, but uh, I don't know. I don't like the idea that he left Chewie in a battle. It's strange, strange occurrence. Um, yeah. It, it just didn't seem like Han Solo of post-Return of the Jedi to, to leave anybody. He'd rather die, I think, than, than do that. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's sort of like one of the, you know, sort of one of his character moments is how he he regrets that that's what he did. Yeah, but the whole setup is weird that he left anyways. Yeah, that's it, true. It, it, I mean, this is Han Solo who, who died for his son. Yeah. And knowing there was no turning back. It, it's not the guy that, that leaves. I, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It, it, not everything fit perfectly. I think with Han, um, but his good moments were really good. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, at the end of the book, when Han and Chewie said goodbye, I was crying. I, 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 I literally, I, I'm on, I'm on the train going to work, and it, like I'm fighting back, getting teared up yeah. by these you saying goodbye, and, and, <laughs> and it's done perfectly, done perfectly, and uh, I mean th- that stuff was so so good. But there, there were times when. Han is interacting with uh, Wexley's crew that it, it, I was like who is this guy like I'm not mm-hmm. 100% sure it's, this feels like the, the Han we know the Han that uh, Kasdan or Lucas would write you know what I mean yeah yeah, um, yeah it's interesting the, the, yeah I mean Wendig has a particular brand of like sass and yep. uh, humor and exactly uh, flair that he has he writes in a vernacular that's very modern, um, very much current with today, uh, and you know, I'm for that. But at the same time, you have to make sure that Han Solo would also say it. Yeah, you know, you, you, th- there's some things that like you can bring in because I mean, let, let's face it, A New Hope was written in vernacular. People, they they were talking the way people talk in 1977. Yeah. You know, you, you talk about Leia being like, "Oh, we we ran into some friends." You know, like like they were jokey and and they were they were they were they they used slang. They they didn't really worry about that. So I don't know. It's it's not something that I really worry too much about. I think it's cool to bring Star Wars into the the uh, the modern you know mo- using modern language, but uh, you 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 got to be careful with the, with the new characters um, yeah. mixing with the old and make sure that. You know, Han, Han sounds good in this book towards the next and the other you know he has to be consistent throughout yeah it'll be interesting to see sort of how these legacy characters are you know pulled in and transferred over into uh, Empire's End because obviously yeah. Han we know Han and Leia are probably going to be in into the Battle of Jakku in some way or another. Yeah. So we know that they're going to make it through that, obviously. Yeah, the book ends with, with the beginning of the Battle of Jakku. Yeah. Crazy. So, so now now we're into Lost Stars territory. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah. so who's aboard the Ravager right now? Galleus Rax? Um, 
Yeah, because then, yep, because Sloane and, um, what's her name, Nora's husband fly to Jakku. Yeah, Bre- Brexit or whatever his name is. Um, <laughs> Breton? Brexit, yeah. It's Bre- like, it's Brexit, Wex- like that. Brexit Wexley? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. Brenton, that's what it was. Brexit. Brexit Wexley. Brenton. Okay, Brexit, yeah. Brexit, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so, and then like there, cause she knows that that's where he came from. Yep. That's where she got, you know, when she got the Imperial records. Rax, and yeah. Coruscant and everything. Yeah. They, they so, just, uh, it was a weird confluence of things. You know, Rax brought the army and she was there investigating him. Yeah. Yeah. And so then that's essentially where, <laughs> where the crap's going to go down. So where are our lost stars heroes? So, I don't is I'm trying to think if she is on the Ravager is because that's the one that goes down. Yeah, the Ravager goes down. I feel like she is. Wasn't she like the head pilot? Yeah, she was. Um, she was like the admiral or the captain or something. Yeah. Yeah. So Galli, but they don't mention Galli's racks on that. Exactly. So I think that sort of lends to your theory that he was originally written as Thrawn and then it got changed. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have put that in Bloodline. I mean, not Bloodline, uh, Lost Stars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a weird thing that's happening there. Who knows what would have happened if that was actually Thrawn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's real and interesting. Because then- the Battle of Jakku was... I mean, the way Rax is talking about it is like, this is going to be our, we're going to make our mark and say what we're, uh, you know, we're say who we here. are. Yeah. But everything leading up to this has been like the Battle of Jakku is, you know, the, uh, this is the last stand of the Empire. And I guess yeah. maybe that's how it went down in history. Um. Okay. So Sienna Thane, uh, Sienna, Sienna and Thane, right? Yep. <laughs> um, Sienna Re is on the Inflictor, not the Ravager. Okay, that's what it is. Inflictor. Okay, so she's not on the Ravager, and the Inflictor is the one that goes down. Inflictor's, okay. Yeah. It's getting hard to remember all these... uh, These these, ships, right? Yeah, it really is. There weren't always so many. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right, so the Inflictor is the one that goes down. Flick that goes down. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Rax, because I'm assuming he probably lands down on the planet. Yeah. He must, right? He, what? Yeah, he must. Yeah, and he's going to go after Sloane because she is going to be looking for that thing that was buried in, I don't know if you remember if it was in the prologue. Yeah, the, the Emperor the, the emperor has something going on on, on Jakku. He, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it's that. Sort of like this like confluence of events that is going into the Battle of Jakku. Yeah. Where you have Rax going to Jakku because he probably knows that thing is still there, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And then you have Sloane there because she is trying to unlock the secrets of who Rax is. Yeah, and I love and how this, then, this ties into the Lando comic and the Imperialis and how the Imperialis was like the treasure ship of the Emperor. Yep. And there was all these dark side uh, artifacts on the Imperialis. I love Which that. Sort of like permeated and infected the ship. Oh, yeah. It was like, it was like a, so it's, a bastion of evil. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if something like that is like happens to Jakku or to like the area of Jakku where the thing is buried or hang on. Because then hold on. Left us. You know. Now I'm just thinking, what happened to the Imperialis at the end of uh, the Lando comic? That's true. Didn't they blow up the Imperialis? Did they blow it? I think they blew it up. Yeah. Yeah, because didn't um, Lobot set it to self-destruct? Yeah, I thought he did. Yeah, I think he set it to self-destruct. So, okay. So this was... All right, I'm I'm confusing my timelines here. So the the, the, uh, after... The the final interlude, the afterword, whatever you want to call it... Yep. ...was in the past. It was during the the OT. 
So it was before yes. the Lando comic. It was before the Lando comic, yeah. Okay. That that makes more sense. Because the Lando comic, I think, takes place um, between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Yeah, some, and, somewhere along the lines. And, and the way everything is sort of portrayed in life that these events sort of sound like they were before A New Hope. Yeah, they, they, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, because he was a kid. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. All right, that make that makes a lot of sense. Um, so there's something hidden on Jakku that's never been dug up, potentially. Yeah. Never made it to the Imperialis. Very yep. interesting. Yeah, because at the end in the afterward or whatever, um... Palpatine sends Gallius Rex back to the planet after he's in the ship because he says like he wants him to guard it for like five years or something like that I think yeah. it was and then he was like if you're still you know if you're still if you've survived I'll know you're worthy of you know either joining the Empire or whatever yeah that that, that could be very very cool very interesting the way they do that and uh, clearly going to Gonna show him the opera, which I like. Yeah, <laughs> that's very cool too. Um, yeah, very, and I'm, I'm just curious how that artifact could play into, I don't know, Ray Force Awakens. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, uh, you know, is there a through line there, or is this just kind of being concocted because you know Jakku is like the new Tatooine? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I hope that Wendig has some fourth foresight into being able to tie in Jakku to like Kylo Ren and mm-hmm. his search for artifacts and I, I, I don't know I, I hope there's something there more than just mentioning Jakku and uh, you know having everything be happen there now yeah I really hope that something comes out of uh, Empire's End that lends credence to maybe why Ray was left on Jakku, yeah, and not any other just random planet. You know, if there's there's something that's tying something with that, you know, Imperial artifact and something with Palpatine that sort of makes Jakku so significant. Yeah, because I mean, Jakku. Let's let's face it, Jakku was invented because Tatooine was was played out. I, everything happened on Tatooine for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so they made an even more remote, even more desolate desert planet yeah <laughs> for everything like, that happened like you can't get further away now Jakku is it yeah last, last stop on the train exactly you know so I'm excited for Empire's End I think that the, these books are coalescing and coming together mm-hmm. I, I think the interludes were very interesting on these these books um I like them more than I, I on a whole I like them more than the ones in Aftermath, aside mm-hmm. from the Dark Side Acolytes from the first book. I thought that was so cool. I'd yeah. like to know more about that. Oh, the real... Oh, the, the interlude in Life Debt with those Acolytes on... Um, uh, was it Corellia? Yeah, yeah. And that whole thing with Vader lives and getting the saber, that was awesome. That was really cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. I like, I like, you know, I want more of that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that, that could be very, very cool. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, like, Church of the Forest, but it seems like there's, like, Church of the Dark Side now, too. Yeah, these, like, Acolytes of the Beyond or something. Acolytes of the... Oh, that's right. I love that. Yeah, that's, like, such a like a death metal name. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure <laughs> Acolytes of the Beyond has already been taken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. What uh, uh, do you have any more notes? What what else do we have to say about uh about this? Do we do you want to talk about uh Kashyyyk more? Do you want to talk about how they uh um, I mean, I feel thing- like Kashyyyk was very predictable, not in a bad way, in a good way. Mm-hmm. We saw we saw the Kashyyyk we always wanted to see yeah. after, you know, being destroyed by the empire. We saw yeah. the liberation of the Wookiees, very cool. Um I feel like the Imperial that prison was really creepy and weird. Really creepy and weird. With those uh, pods, and it was like, ooh, yeah. Kashyyyk spiders? Crazy. Yep. That cool. was that was a really fun passage where they um, infiltrated the Star Destroyer with the 
spiders. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the the Imperials who, that ruled over Kashyyyk, cookie cutter. Uh, I wasn't too yeah. impressed. You know, I'm like, all right, you're you're a gross, uh, you're a gross Imperial, a little heart of darkness thing going on. You're addicted to like, fat grooms. <laughs> yeah, you're fat and gross, and like addicted to like Kashyyyk drugs and uh, whatever. Um, I thought the death was really yeah. cool with like, you know, the uh, one of the Wookiee slaves like rising up, to kill him. That was that was cool. Yeah, yeah. Mister Bones, not not you know, not doing much. But uh, it you was know. nice to see um one of the interludes from Aftermath. Yeah. I was going to say, it was nice to see one of the interludes from Aftermath tying to the life debt with Kashyyyk, with that Wookiee slave that was on <gasps> that one planet, the one with the one arm. That, that, oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't even, I didn't even recognize that. That's what you get from reading yeah. it back to back. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Now that's really it cool. It was the same guy and he, he was with like, um, I think it was a Weequay and. Yeah. There was another alien. I forget which. Maybe a Quarren or something. But like, yeah, that's it was right. like them three. That's who right. Were in it. Yeah. Very very cool. I like and that. They got, they, What's up? They joined like the battle to free the slaves. Yeah yeah yeah. No that that was fan, that's fantastic. I love it. That that I I, I just realized that now. Um, definitely a good advantage to read these books back to back. That that's that's awesome. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's <laughs> that's a pretty good uh, discussion on life debt. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like Empire's End is going to be the the tightest of the, of all the books. It's really going to come together more. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I I just don't like these characters doing nothing. I really don't think Jasmari and and John Burrell need to be around. Uh. You know, there, 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 there are still some screws to be tightened here, but overall, great book, mm -hmm. very interesting, um, fun read. Yeah, definitely a fun read. Check it out. But uh, you know, keep an open eye too. Uh, I'm curious what you have to say. What you thought of these? Uh, you know, what you thought, what you think of life debt? We want to hear from you. Bruise and blasts at retrozap.com. Want to hear your opinions on life debt? Uh, what did you discover? What did you notice? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot more to discuss here too. We didn't really talk too much about the Shadow Council. Um, yeah, I, I think that there's there's some interesting things going on in this book that uh, that still have to play out. Oh, mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. one of the things that what do you came have, out what do you have of to San say? Diego, I just want to mention before we uh, yeah wrap it up is on the book jacket for Empire's End they didn't come on out and say it outright that the downed ATAT on the back of the book cover is Ray's, but that's what they're implying. It's going to be, Ah. I don't know if you've seen any pictures of the yep. uh, front and back book jacket cover for uh, Empire Zen, but yeah, I have. they, they implied that you're supposed to think that that is Ray's ATAT from the force awakens. That's awesome. Yeah. That that's really, really cool. Um, well I'd like that. I would like that a lot. Um one last thing. Like we were talking about with Hasbro, let's talk about Luke Skywalker and his noticeable absence from everything after Shattered Empire. Yeah. It's what is going on? It's inexplicable, and I have to tell you why. Um, I don't know anything, you know. I don't know any hard facts, but there's obviously a moratorium on writing Luke Skywalker going on. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous that in this post Return of the Jedi area, we don't have we have literally no story on Luke Skywalker whatsoever. It's it's a misstep, and I think that uh, publishing needs to uh, you know be a little bit more daring in this way. They need, you know, mm -hmm. Lucasfilm in general, the story group in general, you got to write some Luke Skywalker stories and they have to be canon. Tough luck. You got to do it. it, it it's it's ridiculous to, to think that, like, 
Luke Skywalker was just literally gone right after Jedi and no one talked to him. Like, come on, get it, get it together. He's not around in, in either of these books at all. No one's even t- like, no one even mentions him. Mm-hmm. The hero, the hero of the Republic in Shattered Empire that he's like revered. You know, everyone's like, oh my God, that's like, m- you know, mysterious, legendary Luke Skywalker over there. Yeah. I heard he did it all by himself, but like no one's talking about him. Like th- there's, there's a little, there's a little too little. And, and, and the fact that he's barely mentioned aside from like, oh yes, Leia talked to her brother once. When? <laughs> yeah. Well, these books happen right out. Like, come on. Like, like, it's noticeable. It's, yeah. It, it's noticeable and it's lacking. And it's a big, big misstep to not be talking about Luke Skywalker during this period. We know that he starts some sort of school training the next next generation of Jedi. Yep. What does that look like? He takes off with the, those, the, takes off with the trees at the end of Shattered Empire. Yeah, the trees. Two trees. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we know there are things that happen. And... Let's get into it more. You have to set up some safe zone. We, mm-hmm. we know he doesn't take off and go into hiding until, you know... Close to The Force Awakens. Yeah, until Kylo Ryan, until after Bloodline. I mean, really, yeah, during during or after Bloodline. Yep. So you have the time between uh, Return of the Jedi and Bloodline to work with. Yeah. Let's get something going. It's it's yeah. it's It's getting embarrassing. To not have anything from Hasbro, to not have anything from publishing, the moratorium is ridiculous, and yeah. uh, I, I think it's 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 getting embarrassing, and I think that the publishing and the story group and Lucasfilm in general needs to wake up on this because it's it's going to get weird. Um, if you want the new generation to care about Luke Skywalker at all, uh, yeah, if, you, if, you, if if you want him to just you know be for the old old people, you know that that's fine. But yeah. last time I checked, Luke Skywalker was like the heart of Star Wars. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Rant over. <laughs> Life debt. It's awesome. <laughs> Go check it out for sure. Bingo. Long episode tonight. Had a lot to talk about, huh, Mike? Yeah, it was, you know, it's middle of the summer, but hey, Star Wars is still partying on. There you go, man. We still party with Star Wars. The wine is gone. So it's time to go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening to uh, to Mike and I talk. Thanks for listening to Bruising Blasters. Don't forget to go to RetroZap.com for articles and podcasts being released literally every day. We have a ton of them. We have a slew of different columns, different editorials, and all sorts of different things going on there. Star Wars and much, much more. Uh, RetroZap Podcast Network. It's on iTunes. You can get everything in one feed if you want, or you can subscribe individually. We have the ArgCast, Blob of the Hut, DeuceCast, Skywalking Through Neverland, Talking Apes TV, Classic Marvel Comics, Techno Retro Dads, Trade Federation, We Know Nothing. Uh, We have movie commentaries, Starship Sabres and Scoundrels, The Dune Cast, and our brand new podcast, the Animanicast, talking all about the 90s cartoon, the classic Animaniacs. They do in every episode. And uh, it, it's fantastic. You have to check this one out. They have interviews. They, they they go through. They give a water tower rating. Water tower rating to each episode. It's awesome. Don't forget about Coyote Monday. Hashtag Coyote Monday with everything you're doing. at the holiday. Every single Monday, we brought it to you. The people. And you gotta love it. Kaidi Money t-shirt. Kaidi Money t-shirts over at RetroZap. RetroZap.com slash shirts. Don't forget to go to Jedi News for all of your news. And make sure you email us. We want to hear from you. We want to hear whatever you're talking about. Eating a good sandwich. You want to talk about life debt. You want to talk about Hasbro. Whatever you want to talk about. It's all good. Brews and Blasters at RetroZap.com is the email. E- Brews and Blasters at RetroZap.com is the email address. And, you know, if you like the show, we like iTunes reviews. 
you know, we're always on social media too. You can find us out all over there. We're on Twitter mostly, but you know, hit us up. Start a conversation. Mike, any last words, my friend? Oh, I blank on this every single goddamn time. All right. Thank you so much. And oh, so until bad. next week, tell the Kanji Club. We'll see you later, guys. I'm afraid the party's canceled, but the summer's never show. But I don't want to spend so I must fall upon a note. Before it's getting ready, let me get too much. But I don't want to suffer, but I'm a piece of wicked clutch.